welcome to all my dear student this class i am going to discuss with you about aluminum hydroxide gel before going to discuss about the aluminum hydroxide gel we we'll see about what are the example for aluminum compounds as an antacid so there are the few more examples are there aluminum hydroxide gel ip and dried aluminum hydroxide gel ip or bp method and dried aluminum hydroxide tablet and other aluminum compounds like dried aluminum phosphate dried aluminum phosphate gel and aluminum glycinate basic aluminum carbonate so this class will see about briefly on aluminum hydroxide gel so this is a very important method of uh, formulation for an antacid so the preparation contain not less than 3.5% and not more than 4.5% weight by volume of aluminum oxide al2 here the formula al2o3 okay aluminum oxide so the here in this formulation sometimes may be added some preservatives for example for preservative like methyl oil peppermint oil glycerin sucrose saccharin some uh, preservative like, like these are flavoring agent some uh, and sweetening agent and also like 0.05% sodium benzoate also also added as an preservative so in this formulation sometime may be preservative and some flavoring agent and sweetening agents also to be added so that we already discuss now let's go for the preparation here what is the method of preparation when sodium carbonate treated with potassium this is nothing but potassium that is a mixture of sulfate mixture of aluminum and potassium known as potassium uh, in that al already we discussed under the topic of astringent also okay so k a l s o 4 twice when first the alum to be treated with sodium carbonate not sodium carbonate to be treated with potassium suppose if you are adding so sodium carbonate um, to be added in potassium means that will makes you uncomfortable for cleaning so it is very difficult to uh, clean the alkali substance so the first potassium to be treated with the sodium carbonate this must be considered while doing for the formulation here the sodium carbonate when treated with potassium or alum then it forms a sodium sulfate potassium sulfate and aluminum hydroxide here the mistake happened aluminum hydroxide al oh thrice and carbon dioxide removal of carbon dioxide so here the same method of preparation how they are doing then potassium slowly with constant stirring to add solution of sodium carbonate so the, now we discussed about the equal form equations now how to do the method of preparation first potassium to be treated with hard solution of sodium carbonate slowly with constant stirring and the removal of thereby it will release the carbon dioxide while sodium while sodium carbonate and potassium to be treated that time the removal of carbon dioxide will occur so after that removal of carbon dioxide the precipitated aluminum hydroxide is filtered washed with hot water so it is free from sulfate ion so the precipitate is the precipitate is suspended in distilled water to the required strength so this is the overall method of preparation and i already told you the uh, precautions also alum is added to the sodium carbonate why alum is first added to the sodium carbonate and not vice versa because 
during that time alkali sulfate when alum react with kal so4 twice react with sodium carbonate that will produce the alkali sulfate so it is formed it is difficult to wash so the first alum is added to the sodium carbonate next we'll see about properties of the aluminum hydroxide gel it is a white viscous suspension so most of the formulation um, so for might be emulsion or suspension or powder uh, so these are and tablets so these are the some of the antacid formulations uh, a clear liquid is separated when it is kept standing for some time so uh, it is a white viscous suspension a clear liquid is separated when it is kept standing for sometimes so obviously set all the suspension having some solid particle to be settled down at the bottom of the uh, container so the labeling must be shake well before use for the all antacid next the aluminum hydroxide gel gives astringent effect so the aluminum hydroxide gel gives astringent so aluminum chloride when it react with a gastric hydrochloric acid so here aluminum hydroxide gel when treated with hydrochloric acid so it thereby it gives the aluminum chloride and water so this results in the, when it react with gastric hydrochloric acid this results in nausea vomiting and constipation so aluminum hydroxide gel is a popular antacid and which brings about neutralization of gastric acid by following mechanism so the mechanism of action of aluminum hydroxide is must so we should read thoroughly the what is the mechanism of going on during uh, taking of aluminum hydroxide gel as in the form of a suspension next identification the a solution in hydrochloric acid gives first the solution or the substance to be treated with hydrochloric acid is gives the reaction of characteristic of aluminum compound aluminum compound so next when an equal volume of gel is diluted with distilled water the ph of the solution should not be more than 7.5 so usually the ph limit should be 4 to 7.5 so when it is neutralized with a distilled water the ph of the solution should not be more than 7.5 okay so next we'll see about test for test for purity so what are all the test for purity to be carried out for the aluminum hydroxide formulation first one alkalinity ammonium salts arsenic chloride sulfate and acid consuming capacity okay first we'll see about test for chloride so first the 0.5 g of gel plus 5 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid and heating and cooling dilute to 100 ml so this is your first we are going to make a stock solution 0.5 ml of the substance first test for chloride 0.5 g of the gel plus 5 ml of dilute first the uh, gel to be diluted with a hydrochloric acid it is to be heated and cooling dilute to 100 ml of the solution so from this 100 ml of the solution we are going to take 25 ml of diluted solution then it is to be filtered and carrying out the limit test for chloride to do the limit test for sulfate 5 g of gel plus 5 ml of nitric acid heating and washing diluted to 200 of 200 ml of the water first that gel to be diluted with the 
5 ml of nitric acid heating and cooling then it is to be diluted with 200 ml of water mix well and filter so 10 from this this is known as stock solution from this we are taking 10 ml of the filtrate plus 2 ml of hydrochloric acid so this should be carried out for the limit test for sulfate okay next acid consuming capacity acid consuming capacity to the gel add one point of uh, gel to be taken in the flask and add 50 ml of 0.1 n hydrochloric acid the content are shaken at 37 degrees celsius for one hour so how acid consuming capacity to be carried out first the 1.5 ml of gel to be taken in a taken in a conical flask and add 50 ml of 0.1 in hydrochloric acid this whole content to be shaken at 37 degrees celsius for one hour and titrated with 0.1 in sodium hydroxide here bromophenol blue as an indicator so here the one gram of gel should consume not less than 12.5 ml and not more than 25 ml of hydrochloric acid that means during an uh, titration so you should not you should have um, it should consume not less than 12.5 ml and not more than 25 ml of the 0.1 in hydrochloric acid okay so next we will see about acid acid is nothing but complexometry titration by adapting acid base titration first the 5 gram of the substance to be diluted with hydrochloric acid the solution is now warmed on a water bath solution the solution warm the solution is is now warmed on a water bath after cooling this is transferred to 100 ml conical flask so this volume made up to 100 ml so from this this is known as stock solution from this we are taking 20 ml of the solution plus 40 ml of 0 0.05 disodium additate and for 80 ml of water using methyl red and red as an indicator so here in this reaction so if in the conical flask we are going to take 20 ml of the solution and uh, 0.05 tiosodium editate 40 ml and 80 ml of water and methyl red neutralized with the 0.1 in sodium hydroxide when the color changes to red to yellow so after that the filtrate is heated for about half an hour to add to this add 3 gram of examine and 0.5 ml of xylenol orange as an indicator. Now this mixture is now filtered with a standard 0 0.05 lead nitrate solution until becomes violet color the color appears end point. So due to the formation of why the color formation violet blue violet color appearance means because of the formation of lead xylenol orange. Okay so each ml of 0 0.05 disodium meditate um, equivalent to 0 0.002549 gram of aluminium oxide. Then uses of this very effective slow acting antacid so you may see the equation when it is treated with hydrochloric acid it produces the aluminium chloride and hydrochloric acid okay so next it doesn't absorb an alimentary canal and also it is doesn't produce a carbon dioxide we already discussed about uh, all antacid maximum that will uh, uh, produce a carbon dioxide gas in our stomach so that the antacid should be formulated with the anti flatulent agents so here in you know, what is the advantages of aluminum hydroxide it doesn't produce any carbon dioxide also it travels through uh, alimentary canal 
does in cause any does in cause any systemic alkalosis also so here the dose uh, level 7.5 to 15 ml it causes 7.5 to 15 ml it causes constipation and is therefore administered along with magnesium salt which is all uh, which is mild laxative and storage the storage will be stored in a well closed container well closed air tight you should be you should not be freeze or dispensed thank you